I would like for you to be attentive to another situation, something which comes from heaven, which comes from God, something which God wants to do in the lives of each and every one of us. Please, let us see what God did with Abraham. We have been speaking about Abraham for the past few days, specifically to bring to you an idea of the image God wants of us. He created men in his likeness, but men lost his likeness. But God found Abraham and the image, the likeness, not the physical likeness, but the spiritual likeness of the character of his behavior above all of the faith, which changes any situation. So when we take these bring this information of Abraham. In actual fact, we are obeying the word of God, which says, look to Abraham. So if I want to see how is my life before God, let me reflect my life upon Abraham. Let me have Abraham as my referential to see how I need to proceed to please God in order for God to do with me the same he did with Abraham, which he wants to do with you as well, my dear friend, because God is great. And because he is great, great things need to happen. Wonderful things need to take place, monumental, because he's great and he has given his spirit, the Holy Spirit, specifically for this, in order for us to bring the message of power from his part for the suffering world and make a new world. Let us work in the name of the Lord Jesus with this faith upon the faith of Abraham. Let's read Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Firstly, God asked. Firstly, God gave the word which is for us to obey. First, we obey the word. First, we need to attend to the word. He is the Lord, and as the Lord, he has the right to speak first. Before we ask, before I ask God anything, I need to hear my Lord, because he is the Lord. He is God. He is the almighty God of the hosts, Lord of hosts. So first, I need to hear. And then he says, Get out of your country. Why does God command Abraham to leave the country where he was already established, well established? Why does God command Abraham to leave his country, to leave his family and his father's house? Why? Because in order for God to do great things in our lives, he cannot do it according to what we're living in the circumstances we live in. For example, you are living in sin. How can God do something great in your life if you live in sin? This can't be. There's no way because God is justice. How will he make use of injustice? It's not possible. He will use sin. How will he communicate with sin? It can't happen. So one needs to understand that for her to become someone in life with God, for her to become and have a blessed life with God. Firstly, she needs to let go of her heart distant from this earth. She needs to give up her family, her relatives, her father's house. Jesus spoke about this. Jesus said, whoever loves his father, mother more than I is not worthy of me. Whoever loves his children more than I is not worthy of me. Whoever loves brother, sister more than I is not worthy of me. And whoever does not pick up his cross, deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me, also cannot be my disciple. So we need to abandon our life, our common life, our inappropriate, incorrect life, our life that is wrong, subject to the lords of this world, the lords of hell, the religions, all in all, 
to put the gods aside in order for us to go to a new land, this new land. It's obvious that today is a spiritual land where milk and honey flows, which is the thoughts of God, His Word. When we leave, when we leave aside, we could say our habits aside. When we leave our gods, when we leave our idols aside, when we leave our first love aside, and we make God the first love, we prioritize the Lord in our lives, we are leaving country, we are leaving family, we are leaving the Father's house, we are leaving our life in second place, the plans of this world in second place, our projects in seven, second place, and embracing God's projects in first place. What is God's project for my life? Well, I already know, but what is God's project for your life? You do not know. Why do you not know? Because still, you keep yourself in your country. You still keep yourself switched on, linked to your family's, your father's house, the love for this world, for money, vanity, ambitions. So as long as this, these first loves remain in your life, God cannot make of you an Abraham in life. So he teaches us to look to Abraham specifically for this because Abraham was that man who obeyed first. He obeyed the voice of God. He was humble enough to obey and he was pre prepared, ready to obey. And when he took the decision to obey, then God showed him the land which he would show. Tomorrow, we will speak about the seven blessings which God promised to Abraham. The seven blessings. Seven is the number of perfection. Abraham became the blessing himself. Is this not what you want, my friend? Do you not want to be the blessing itself? Of course you want. But for you to be the blessing itself, firstly, you need to hear humbly the voice of God, which is His Word, and obey. So that all of this may take place in your life. Have you imagined to have the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of faith, which is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Spirit which guided the Lord Jesus, which strengthened Him in the most bitter moments of His life, which is the Spirit of the Almighty? Have you imagined the Spirit inside of you, for example? As the testimony of this teacher who graduated and became a teacher, very successful, very intelligent, capable, etc. But all the information she managed to gather within herself to help others and exercise her profession did not help her, did not help her to solve the problems in the interior. Why? Because all the informations of the world serve for the world. They serve for the world. But when the information comes from God, it serves for all eternity. So when you receive the Spirit of God, you receive the mind of God. You receive the mind of the Lord Jesus. So now imagine, imagine all the knowledge all the divine knowledge is with inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit. So when one has the Holy Spirit, she knows what she wants, knows where she is heading, knows how to make choices. She knows exactly what to do with her life. She knows exactly what to do with her future. Because she has the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the Almighty. She has the spirit of the Creator. The spirit which transmits knowledge, conscience, which the person needs to overcome the difficulties, the problems, the anguishes, the bitterness of this life. The person starts to have power within her in order to overcome the world hell. And that includes the pains this world 
has sought to cause us. Praise be to God. She sought, she sought, she sought, and eventually she found in the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God very simple, but where the Holy Spirit inhabited. So it does not matter if, whether it's the Temple of Solomon or a tiny church. What matters is the Spirit, the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit comes, it's done. That's it. That's it. Praise be to God.